I'm Austin Lugo. I'm Andrew Harp. This is With Nothing to Say. Let's talk about the man who shot Liberty Valance. Before we get into this week's film, next week we're going to be watching Forever a Woman by Kanua Tanaka. I've seen quite a few of her performances, but I've never seen any of her films before. I kind of wanted to pick this partly because I saw it on the Criterion Collection. It seemed like a pretty interesting collection. But on top of that, too, I realized that we haven't done a film by a female director in like a year and a half. It's been a while. Yeah, that's that's probably I was thinking about that, too. <laughs> I was thinking I've been thinking about that, too. And um... if we're going to pick a woman director, might as well uh, pick at least one of my favorite Japanese actors. I've never seen her her filmmaking work, but it, it seems intriguing. And on top of that, too, this year we've done a lot of American films. Of the nine films we've done this year, six of them have been American. So, which is weird. We usually don't lean that. I don't really care. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Keep, you know, it's. But you yeah. know, it just has. It just. Good to, you, know, you know. I agree with you. Other other parts. This is our first Japanese film of the year. So I think the last Japanese film we watched was. Not too long ago. I think it was maybe like October, November. It was uh, the one about the family. Oh, gosh, I can't remember what it was called. Something Walking. It was like 2007, 2008. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it, you, it was one of your favorite movies of last year. You don't remember it was. It, it was on my list. I can't remember the name of it. It's a great movie. I can think of like specific scenes in the movie, but I can't remember the name of the movie. That's so okay. That's- it's still walking. Still walking. I got the walking yeah. part. I was like still walking. there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But this week we watched the incredible. Yeah. Enough of this. Enough of this. Enough like, of this yeah. Enough of this foreign film nonsense. <laughs> we watched a real ass American movie. <laughs> the, I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen an American movie. American movie. This is the most. It is the American movie exists. in parent in uh in italics. I mean, you got John Ford, Jimmy Stewart. And John Wayne. I mean, that's that's about American as just any movie to have ever existed. And it's right. about and it's, it's really West. about America as a whole, really. If you were really? to kind of you know, it's a great Western story, but there are plenty of things that it's about the history of modern America. You know, it's a history about the world. And of course, it, it, with any John Ford movie, the beautiful black and white cinematography. Late John yeah, Ford is misses. so interesting and kind of weird because it feels oddly anachronistic i mean this film comes out in 1962 and if you had told me it came out in the 1940s i probably would have believed you john ford has a very specific style that it's like old-fashioned i guess it is and and there's nothing wrong with i'm not complaining john ford's one one of the greatest directors of all time but it's not, it's not even that he doesn't develop as a director because he clearly, I mean, you look at his early works, stuff like Stagecoach, and you look at some of his uh, middle career work. Like his his time. late period movies, and I think like I think Searchers is a late period one, right? The Searchers, right? The Searchers and this and this movie, they're similar to me because they are so. There's something so like um, both movies are kind of like aimed to sort of um, dispel this idea of like wet of the of american west right like he he's kind of like using the western kind of like formula and like painting palette to create a film that sort of points to the fact that like because of you know american history whether it's true or not it has greatly impacted the world that we live in today which you know for better or for worse is the world that we live in um, I think there's a strong argument in whether it be the searchers or in this movie, then it might not necessarily be for the best in a lot of ways, you know, in terms of this, like, kind of like this, like, sort of this, like, fake fight for like democracy and representation and like, uh, you know, a liberal democracy and representation, you know, these things that we that that Americans hold so dear, even today, you know, it, it's kind of all built up through. I don't know, lying, cheating, stealing, murder, violence. No one could quite make this film the way John Ford does. Of course, this was originally a novel, which we've been doing a lot of book to movie adaptations as of late. I've noticed for whatever reason, we've stumbled upon quite a few of those. And this one in, in particular, I think the reason John Ford can do it better than anyone else 
is here is the man who basically invented the modern idea of what a Western is. He invented the mythology that we sit with when we think of a Western and we think of the Wild West. I mean, early John Wayne and the, you know, the, the fights with the natives and all that kind of stuff and the way we, we see the world and we see America, especially someone who lives in Nevada where a lot of this shot stuff was shot and a lot of stuff takes place like in Stagecoach, which is an actual city that you can go to not too far from where we live, which is it's wild <laughs> now, you know, coming from the Midwest, living here in a place where so many beautiful Westerns and a lot of John Ford stuff was shot uh, just around here. But I think the reason John Ford can do this in a way no one else can is because he's sort of been disillusioned by his own mythology. And I think this is a film about mythology. There's this great line right near the end I actually wrote down because the line was just so sad. No, are you are you are you talking about are you talking about like after he tells a story? Mm -hmm. No, I mean that's like an all time great line where yeah, where he says just like, you know, when the legend becomes fact, you print the legend. I mean that's an all time great line. Because it's like because if the truth were to be known at this point, it would disrupt the order. It would disrupt the social order. Yeah. And it's not worth it. And that's really what is at the core of this piece it's not really about liberty balance or violence it's not the the classic shootout which of course we we are exposed to the truth of the shootout towards the end of the film but it's really about hierarchy and order and sort of this this constant desire to have order even if that order comes at the cost of the loss of Liberty. I mean, it's not a coincidence that his name is Liberty Valance, <laughs> right? I I mean, when Jimmy Stewart comes into town, there's this Such a good villain, Ugh, great Lee villain. Marvin. He's one of the greatest actors. I watched I watched a movie recently that he was in from the from the '60s called uh, Point Blank, um, which is based off that I think like um, it's like based off like kind of like this a uh, series of like uh, novels. Um, I think it's based off the first one, and that movie's fucking awesome. And Lee Marvin's amazing. He's got a great voice. He's got a great look. He's kind of have this like pugnacious sort of like face. Um, he it's kind of a bit of like a craggly face and stuff. Um, but he's so good in the in the in this particular movie. He's so um he's such a threat. And his two gang members. I'm not even sure what you would describe them as. Yeah, they, they give incredible recognize- performances. You, you, one of them was Lee Van Cleef. Did okay, you notice that. I, his face looked very familiar, but I, I could not yeah. place him during the movie. Yeah, yeah. This is pre Good and the Bad and the Ugly for sure. Right, so, which yeah, is crazy. He, <laughs> yeah, he's great in that movie. Yeah, I mean, a great cast. Like all the minor characters and stuff in it are great. Everybody's really, really good in it. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, it's also conspicuously funny. It has some like good humor and lines in yeah. it. <laughs> like really good stuff. I think John Wayne is secretly really funny. And I, I, there's just funny. something in his delivery. It's so dry and he has such a serious face. I mean, are you talking he, about Jimmy Stewart? No, I'm talking about John Wayne. Oh, John Wayne. Okay, sorry. I'm getting him mixed up with John Ford. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah John, a lot of John's going John on. Wayne is hilarious in the movie for sure. But I like Jimmy Stewart's lines too. Like, there's that weird, like, man child or whatever that goes into his classroom and they're like aren't you gonna whip him and he's like he's too big <laughs> that's such a good line uh, i was like laughing yeah he was really good and um yeah like the comedic aspect of the film was really good but yeah but also the movie's like terribly sad too a lot of the time <laughs> it is a film that is constantly haunting and there's no satisfaction in this film i think when we watch a western there's a certain satisfaction that we expect from the big shootout right we've got our good guy we've got our bad guy and what i love even more about this film is john ford actually leans into that at the beginning of the movie i mean we we get our classic liberty balance evil guy beating people up you know hitting women all that kind of shit and you got the the bumbling sheriff right who who doesn't know what he's He's doing the marshal the The marshal uh Jimmy Stewart comes into town. He's kind of uh, he's a lawyer. He's, he's a, a lawyer. lawyer. <laughs> and and you got, you know, your your uh sharpshooter John Wayne, right? You you mm-hmm. have all of the 
the traditional ingredients mm. of a Western. Right. Well, and I so, guess so. You, you say that, but I think the introduction of Jimmy Stewart is what kind of sets off, kind of unbalances a little it a little bit. Because you could just make a movie where it was John Wayne and Lee Marvin, and you could just call it a day. Right. Right. <laughs> and it'd just be like John Wayne, he's fighting Lee Marvin, and then they get into a standoff at the end. You know, that would be a, probably a really good movie. But the introduction of Jimmy Stewart's character into the fabric of the town and the community and all these characters and people, it sets off something really interesting, which makes this movie stand out. He sort of like unbalances kind of like the fabric of like their way of life. He brings in education. He brings in kind of like this idea of like uh, nonviolent action, which even he uh, doesn't believe in anymore. Uh, He brings in all these like different like things that are kind of like kind of like part of like america overall um but it's sort of he's he's kind of coming at it he really jimmy stewart is really and this is not like a new opinion or a new like uh, read or anything like that he really is the true villain right because he's coming in to kind of like in 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 kind of like um uh he, he's coming in with this kind of like his own uh, um self uh righteousness um, which you know isn't that different than like a, a, a colonialist coming in and 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 you know with the idea of like bestowing you know their education and their religion and all this stuff. Yeah, I couldn't help but think, and maybe it's just because we were talking about it last week, but a face in the crowd and this sort of political undertones of this film. And I mean, Jimmy Stewart isn't as openly evil as perhaps Andy Griffith is in a face in the crowd. Well. I wouldn't even he's more self-aware, but I said, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> at the same time, he is he is utilizing his sort of educational background and the advantage of coming from a foreign place, right? The East Coast to to make himself rich and famous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, and and, and he takes credit for it. And mm-hmm. I mean, we, we see the consequence of that. I mean, that's why the name of the movie is The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, because it's mm-hmm. it's all about this anything idea for the man perception. who shot Liberty Valance. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and this idea he feels of bad about it. Like he does. Yeah. He feels bad about it because he knows he lies. He lied. Well, like he he sir, he creates an entire career out of it. Like he doesn't feel. Yeah. I mean, sure, he feels bad. He doesn't feel that it, bad, but <laughs> you know, not enough to not become governor and senator. And you know, I, I love it too. You Congress. know, like it, it's it, and and the stuff with the reporters is so good. I love the beginning of the movie, by the way, the very beginning, the opening scene, because I don't know how John Ford does it, but he's able to imbue. We don't even know the story at this point. Um. But he is able to imbue this part of the movie with so much like sadness and 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 what what's the word like pathos, I guess you could say. Like maybe I'm using that word wrong. But he's just able to like imbue all these scenes with such like a strong like I feel so emotional when I see those opening scenes, even though I don't even know the background, you know, like when they go to the burned down building, uh, uh John Wayne's burned down house. That's crazy. You know, like that that, that to me is just such like powerful images you know powerful performances you know the using music is great too i think for the most part and you don't even know the full story yet i don't know how the how how the hell he's able to do that but he's so effective at doing that and then you get the rest of the story and it just becomes even more impactful yeah and i'm thinking of those those opening moments and i'm thinking specifically of this shot right before they go to john wayne's burned down house and it's yeah Haley, hallie whatever her name is and and she's talking to to whoever the hell she's sitting next to. Um, it's the Marshal. The Marshal. You, what, you just watched this movie. I, I literally, you? yeah, I did just watch this movie, like literally minutes ago. <laughs> she's sitting yeah, next, yeah. To, next to the Marshal. And her eyeline is really yeah, she's great. weird. Mm-hmm. She's not, I mean, obviously she's not looking at the camera, but she's not really looking at anyone. And it's not uh-huh. like she's looking at something off in the distance. And it creates this really surreal feeling in the viewer that just it's almost off putting. Yeah. And I think that's part of like this opening scene where even though he comes into town and Jimmy Stewart and and her come into town and the reporters are all excited and happy, right? The dialogue yeah. suggests that this should be a happy <laughs> moment. And yet, on top of that is just this layer of sadness that is 
not necessarily spoke. I mean, you kind of get a couple of like hints here and there, but it's more through the images and the way that it's shot that just something feels really off. And it's this moment of mourning. And it's really interesting thinking back on it, looking at how Jimmy Stewart reacts during this moment, because he is sort of this mm. open, boisterous, political self, even though he's going here for a funeral of, I mean, I maybe it's friends the guy who word, word yeah but it's the guy who saved his life who who made his life the way that it is yeah it's the guy who made him made them who he is today so obviously he feels bad that he died and he get <laughs> and he got nothing for it in return really yeah i mean john wayne sacrificed everything for I mean, he, he gets nothing in the end which again is, is another strange and weird turn of events in this film is well, john wayne is our yeah real hero in this piece and yet he is he is rewarded with his girl being stolen and just dying like we don't know anything about him after Mm -hmm. uh jimmy stewart leaves to to go do whatever he does we just know what happens after we just know what happens after he saves jimmy stewart right right Um, which is he becomes he becomes like manically depressed essentially and i'm assuming that he never recovers from that um, because the reason why he saves Jimmy Stewart is because he deeply cares for the Vera Miles character for Hallie. And so he knows that if Jimmy Stewart dies, she'll be distraught. So he has to save him. But in saving him, like everything is fucked entirely. Like, like, <laughs> because even at the beginning of the movie, you know, they talk about like the fact that like, you know, they talk about like the train station coming in. Right. And how it changed everything or whatever. And now everybody that lived there before basically doesn't live there anymore. Like everything has completely changed. Like in a matter of like what, like a few decades, maybe several decades, maybe like, I don't know, three, four decades, maybe. Um, I think like Jimmy Stewart is supposed to be like in his twenties or whatever in the movie, like when they flash back. Right. Which is fine. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> no. I, I don't really need I don't need like a like a young actor composite. I don't want anyone else him. playing Jimmy Stewart. No. Absolutely. No, I'm okay with that. So it doesn't really matter. And yeah, like, and and you can maybe even chalk up that train station coming in because, you know, they're, I'm sure, like, becoming a state also led to, you know, that, you know, him killing Liberty Valance in order to save uh, Jimmy Stewart, which I need to know the name of this character. It's like a very, it's a very odd character. Ransom Stoddard. Yeah, in order to in order to say ransom, like times. <laughs> it sort of sets off this like butterfly effect in which, um, you know, they live in the modern world essentially now. Yeah, it's crazy. The, it's the destruction of tradition and the Wild West, not in the sense of because we often think uh, of these westerns as a sense of sort of conquering the savages and this sort of uh, civilization right the the civilizing uh, of these communities and and going to the Mm -hmm. west and and bringing law and order and these kind of things yeah and and yet with this technically they they bring law and order i mean that's kind of jimmy stewart's whole thing i think right that's there's a lot of discussion about that in the movie like like when they're in the schoolhouse and he has that that quote yeah that scene is so funny (laughs) he's such a bad teacher he's a terrible teacher i mean speaking as a professional teacher well, he's not good well it's like the idea is that he's like he's like he's 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 see, instead of like telling he's not telling them to like oh you know think for yourself and you know da da da. he's basically just saying like he's basically just being like yep america is the best country he's indoctrinating them right yeah. like like he's not a good teacher i mean le- learning to read and write is great but to what end he, he's not utilizing like he kind of sells education as this sort of liberty right this idea which it should be, right? Education is this thing that liberates us from the chains of, of poverty and ignorance. And yet he <clears throat> utilizes that very thing, right? When he takes the newspaper, which is, is selling this very specific, I mean, it's a political move when he takes that newspaper, which is selling right, right. a very specific idea of how the world should work. And he's teaching the, the, that. The fact <laughs> and, that we should be a state, right? And the yeah. fact that we should be a state and the whole, something about the big cattle. I don't know, there's like this cattle ranch thing going on the i think the idea is that like you have like these ranchers who own a lot of land or control a lot of land and they don't want to be a state because obviously being 
Because then I think, you know, you could lose your land. You know what I mean? Like all of a sudden you're now under the purview of the United States law. And I think if you own a lot of property and you're trying to make a money a lot, a lot of money off of it, you probably don't want to be taxed and you probably don't want like um, cops around. Um, but statehood obviously can be, you know, and, and you can see both sides, right? Like you can see why being a state might be good for people because, you know, schools, um, you know, social services, um, transportation, obviously like the train. Um, but again, it's like, like the people in the town, including the very miles character, you know, they see it as like a prog progressive thing, you know, like, wow, you know, we get all these different things if we become a state. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it sort of brings in kind of like, instead of like her, like Lee Marvin types who are violent, they'd beat people up, you know, their, their pleasures and their, and their tactics are very simple. Jimmy Stewart, you now have like Jimmy Stewart characters coming in, right? Like Ransom Stoddard characters coming in who are tactical and uh, they're liars and they do things with like a kind of like a smile, and like a handshake in order to fuck people over or get them killed. It's the same language, but like in a different dialect. Yeah, it's like these, these two sides of the same coin where they're both doing the same thing and then they're both kind of creating mm -hmm. this chaos and evil and perhaps you could argue jimmy stewart is actually even more evil because unlike liberty valance at least liberty valance is both aware of what he's doing and it's very obvious right? yeah. he's not trying to hide anything like he comes into a room and it's like oh shit you know like you know exactly what's going down man. he's a bad guy yeah. yeah he's a bad guy and everyone's aware of it and he's aware he's of not it. a liar no and he owns it where Jimmy Stewart's character, Stoddard, he has he creates this illusion that he's fighting the good fight, right? He's the good guy here. Yes. He, uh and 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 so and he kind of believes it. And, and he until I the think end. that's part of it too, is you know, <laughs> till near the end, he's he buys into his own bullshit, right? He buys into the idea that he is worthy of this and that he's moving the town forward and he's blinded by his own ambitions that he doesn't realize that he is no better than uh, than liberty balance at all yeah and 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 the john wayne character um tom Do tom he's like kind of like in the middle right like he's not lee marvin he's not jimmy stewart he is a thoughtful good-natured guy you know he his interests are also simple he wants to marry vera miles he wants to be you know he wants to be in a relationship with her and he wants to he cares about the people in the town obviously he he does want to kind of establish this kind of you know you know this level of law and order right where you know people are you know get what they need and and you know are more or less protected of course then again you know you have rancher guys and stuff like that like Lee Marvin who are coming in uh, liberty balance that is um so he's kind of like in the middle and again you know the movie is kind of like about the destruction of that type of guy right the end of that guy you know because he literally kills liberty valance but through liberty valance's death john wayne and sort of that like worldview that purview it, it also melts away mm -hmm. his reason for existing because he's i mean he's the classic western figure of sort of the yeah stoic uh john wayne type character i mean why right so amazing masculine like, yeah masculine guy right like it would like when he gets beaten up when jimmy stewart um you know when uh, ransom sire gets beaten up he's emasculated yeah and he's beaten up multiple times i mean that's that's yeah. the very first time we meet jimmy stewart and he can't shoot a gun he can't shoot a gun he can't do anything and yet he weirdly is, is seen as the hero of this town and it's so yeah I think back to all those moments where he's beaten up and, and I mean, it's, it, it is, he is sort of emasculated. I mean, the first time he is beaten up, they sort of like take all his books, right. And the idea of like uh, the sort of scholarly nerdy sort of like not a true man. And then the next time he's beaten up is he's serving food, right. They even call him a waitress. They, they, they see him as sort of less than a man, because of his reaction to violence and towards the game of he, he keeps continuing to sort of refuse violence because he thinks the way to win 
is is merely through through these tactics and and i guess it sort of works out in the end because it's not so much that he has to be successful in his violence he has to create the illusion of violence he has to create the illusion of masculinity i think that's kind of what he learns throughout the pieces mm-hmm. he because he's never he never really learns how to shoe i mean he never does no he doesn't things, right he doesn't it's not like this growth of you know we start as this like nerdy scholarly guy and then by the end he's a john wayne type character he's not any better than he was at the mm-hmm. beginning at these sort of things however right. he, he becomes, just accepted it yeah he just accepts it and he's like that's just not who i am and he and yet he still goes out and that that moment's also interesting then because he still goes out and tries to kill liberty valance not knowing that john wayne is there because he's 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 accepted the he's accepted the fact that like talking to liberty valance or whatever isn't going to go anywhere and he's so he's so upset I think about being emasculated in in front of Vera Drew in front of the Vera Drew character, and he's so upset and so vindictive and filled with revenge that he he has to defeat Liberty Valance. John Wayne is the opposite. He's not a revenging. He's not like a, a vengeful guy. He's level headed. He's stoic. He doesn't care. That's why Jimmy Stewart is a completely different. The Jimmy Stewart character is a completely different character. He's just a, he's a ransom. He's just like a, uh, he he he's he's um he's like not a good guy. Like he's not all that different than Liberty Valance. When Liberty Valance like you know gets um you know like when he loses the election, you know how is he any different than when Jimmy Stewart confronts him to kill him, um about you know, uh, essentially you know uh, making him look less of a man. Yeah, I I like that that sort of reverse reversal of masculinity where in that moment Jimmy Stewart sort of wins, right? He he kind of shows off his own uh, populist style uh, of control, and both of them are completely under the thumb of their own emotions. I mean, everything Jimmy Stewart does, even though, ironically enough, he he tries to be a person who's logical and utilizes education and utilizes sort of tactics to sort of think his way out of situations. Yet in the end... (laughs) It all comes down to, you know, like when when all else fails, like it's just, again, it's like, it's like at least like John Wayne is like once again he's straight up and honest about it like throughout the movie where he's just like like look out here you know we use you know in order to solve problems we, occasionally we have to like kill ourselves kill each other over it you know and and it and it that's just the way it is you know and Jimmy Stewart's like no 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 like we don't need to do that you know we don't need to do that and you know that's kind of like what happens in the end where Jimmy Stewart realizes like in order to sort of supplant and carry on this quote unquote social order violence has to be in the equation in the at, at the end of it it just has to be like in a different um it has to be in, in a different uh it has to be in some kind of like more palatable uh way right like i don't know yeah and when when they kill Liberty Valance, there's like 30 minutes left of the film, and at the time I'm like, well, yeah, what's gonna happen now? Like the thing has been that done. might be the, that might be like the one like just nitpicky criticism I have is that like when after they kill Liberty Valance, it's just kind of like, all right, is the movie gonna end? You know, <laughs> it, it starts to kind of like weigh a little bit, mm. like the length starts to like weigh a little bit. You know, it's like a two hour long movie, so you're just kind of like. Okay, but I mean, like the election scene's good and crazy, and like all that stuff is good. The ending's amazing, obviously. So I can't really. It's just a nitpick. I was definitely confused by it when it happened, and obviously, part of it is it's for the reveal, the the John Wayne reveal that he actually killed Liberty Balance. I feel like it's necessary though, because I think if you end, let, let's say we we have Liberty Balance killed, and then right after that we reveal that it was actually John Wayne, and we end there. Then I think you have to show his right as power. Yeah, right. It's because if if you end with that, it feels like it's at the end of the day, it's still a story about violence and, and killing and and the progression of 
of sort of the, these these Western ideals. But because we have another 30 minutes after this where it becomes basically this political thing where we <laughs> watch an election take place and they're arguing about yeah. it. And, and you see... It's political tactic. Yeah, you, you see it at the court. It's not about the killing. Like, it, like, even though the movie is called The Man Who Shot Liberty Balance, it's not about the killing of Liberty Balance, right? It's it's the idealization right. of... Right. The, right, which is why, like, the very last line, well, right, last line. So, like, yeah, again, kind of going back, like, imagine a movie where Jimmy Stewart doesn't exist. If it was Lee Marvin and John Wayne, and Lee Marvin and John Wayne got into a fight and he killed Lee Marvin, the ending would be, like, we did it. The town has been saved. Isn't that great? You don't get any of that stuff in the movie, right? Like, Liberty Valance is killed, and it's not like people are happy that he died, but there's not really any kind of, like, it's not like the town was better, you know, like it's not like anything was just like suddenly improved, you know, or this kind of like rapturous, like kind of ending where it's like, we did it. We saved the day, you know, because of that killing, you know, it led, it leads to this like statehood thing. It leads to the rise in power of liberal lawyer, Jimmy Stewart becoming a politician. You know, what do they say? Like he's like a Senator and a governor and all this stuff. Like, you know, he, he's like this powerful politician, you know, and, 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 but again, he has these kind of like twisted ideals of like education and, 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 you know, diversity and Americanism and nationalism and all this stuff um, that I wouldn't necessarily think, I don't really think is a very, those are really like great ideals, right? Like <laughs> it, I, I think people are worse off because of that in general, like the whole of like this state or whatever they are in. Yeah. And as I was watching this movie, I, I don't typically do this. Emily loves to do this, which whenever we start a movie, she'll go into Wikipedia and read the whole plot, which baffles me. Why, (laughs) why you'd want to do that, particularly at the beginning of the movie, but it was near the end of the movie. And I realized we were, I referenced a couple of cities like stagecoach, but we never know what, state they're in now my assumption is california my assumption see my assumption would be nevada because it's it's after the gays very address and nevada became a state in 1864 so that's my and they're kind of in that right. sort of western and okay so that's state. probably a good theory they never say yeah they, i don't think they ever say the state but they they never say the state they, they say statehood a lot and i think it's it's purposeful because it's not right it's not really about the territory to state as, it's a general as, western yeah it's state. about it's a state west. west it's about <laughs> The United States, right? You know, yeah, it is. Yeah. This idea of yeah. what it means to be an American and, and how yeah. <laughs> and how perhaps and obviously it's different now than it was then, but how politicians who live in Washington, D.C. control mm-hmm. the lives, and which is like one of the big arguments for why you know a lot of territories don't want to become states is now you are sort of under the thumb of people who live thousands of miles away which isn't as big of a deal now because yeah you know the idea of this is very different but you look back you know in the 1800s <laughs> and even of course when this film is released in 1960 what it meant to sort of live in different parts of the country was was a very big thing i mean if you lived in nevada you lived a very different length than you lived in indiana or kentucky mm-hmm. or maine and so the fact that this small group of people which i guess is the problem still is right a small group of people even though he sells it as a republic right it, it's the people right. who are supposed to take over and, and vote but but it's not right it's the small but he's such an asshole people. about it yeah he is <laughs> like the school scene again going back to the school scene he like the way he, like he corrects people's grammar or like corrects like 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 you know like their quotes and stuff like that and and he has like this self righteous like tone about him well, as if he's, you know, he, as if he's, you know, uh, um, imparting wisdom to, um, you know, these lowly, uh, 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 illiterate farmers, you know, and it's just like, it's just, it's just like kind of like anger inducing because you're just kind of like, bro, you don't know anything, you know what I mean? Like, you don't know shit. Um, and, you know, and again, like, that's like kind of like, like, that's unfortunately, even though some would say otherwise, that's kind of like how liberal democracy works, right? Like, it's just kind of, it's kind of like telling it, it's, you know, education, the most important thing in the world, but liberal democracy, liberal 
you know, idealism, uh, 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 um, you know, this thing, it, it kind of, it's sort of all about like explaining to people who you feel are lowlier than you, whatever that means, that they, that really what they want is not what they want. They're, what they really want is this, you know, you want a democracy, you want a republic, you want this, you want that. And I'm not like an anti-democratic person or anything like that, far from it. It's just that it, 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 as we've seen throughout human American history, obviously people who espouse like, you know, pro democracies, you know, democracy and all this stuff, they use it. They use like this idea of a democracy in order to get what they want. Yeah. And gosh, I don't know why that, that classroom scene is just so, it, it's such an incredible moment. And it really captures this film as a whole. And it makes me think as, as it, it, it's very funny. And it makes me think of as a teacher, an English teacher. So I don't teach history. So it's a little different, but I live in a very, or I don't live, but I work in a very rural community, very sort of conservative Trump. But it's weird because that small community lives right outside of Reno, which is a pretty liberal blue community. So, so it's like this weird dichotomy. And when I talk to kids, to my students about this kind of stuff and just really try to explore their minds because uh, unlike Jimmy Stewart's idea of education, we shouldn't be indoctrinating any specific idea of, you know, this is good or this is bad. I have kids who love Trump and I have kids who, well, actually I don't have any kids who love Biden because I don't know if anyone feels that strongly about Biden, but, you know, kids across the spectrum, you know, I got socialists, capitalists, everything in between. And, and one of the things is you talk to all these kids and they are so, no, no matter, right, their beliefs, they're so convinced that the United States democracy is the greatest thing to have ever, ever. existed. And they, and they just yep. can't, they can't like fathom another way of existing in the world. I mean, even another system, another, yeah, right. They, they've spent the last, you know, 10 years basically being indoctrinated 10 to 12 <laughs> yeah. years indoctrinated with this idea of this is how the world works. And I'm not but even, it's all, yeah, it's all based on a lie. You it know is. what I mean? <laughs> That's the point of the movie, right? Like the point of the movie is that this, that I, that idealistic like view of the country is all Doesn't based exist. on a lie it's based on a quote-unquote legend which is just a lie right like, like it doesn't exist like a, a system like that can't exist it's 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 a fraud because it was created through a lie right and that's like the idea of the movie right uh, the 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 jimmy stewart character ransom his career he's a fraud he's a hack because the reason why he's famous is because of something that he didn't do. <laughs> and having and even the, when he tells the truth, yeah. even when he tells the truth, it's too late. Yeah, it's that perspective of the press, which is a really yeah intriguing part of this film, is the press plays yeah. a very big role. And the because, Peabody. Peabody and how sort of stories, legends, myths. I mean, I teach a mythology class and I talk about when we talk about modern myths, the way that we we shape and we see the world is is so important and the way we tell these stories matters. And even when he confesses to the press, because the press yeah. keeps saying over and over again, you know, it's a story, right? We have to produce it. We have to, I mean, Why he, are you here? he literally comes to the funeral, right? He comes to his fucking casket, right? He's, in, yeah. he's about, and he's like, we have to get the story. And so he feels like the villain. Like he feels like this asshole is like, you're, you know, you're, I understand you want the truth, but like, you know, have a little respect. And yet at the end, when he rips it to pieces, you realize, oh, like this idea of the free press, this idea that anyone can produce whatever they want. And yep. it's you know, also a lie. All this bullshit. It's it's also a lie because we all have to propitiate this myth that this is how the world works. Because if we don't do that, then suddenly our, our world crumbles it's, and it's we disrupted. can't afford that. Yeah. Yeah. It's too, yeah, it's not, it's not worth it to print the truth in this case. Cause it's, again, it would completely disrupt the social order. It would disrupt his career, which, you know, is this amazing story about this guy, you know, this lawyer who went out West, you know, trying to, and he got beat up, but you know, he shot him and he killed him. And now he's a, you know, it's like, 
that story is is has uh, has is a, it's been around for too long, and it it that story is sort of like a microcosm in like the history of the United States in general. It just you can't it can't be disrupted. Yeah, it's like it's like John Ford <clears throat> himself, who crafted the idea of what we think of as a Western and crafted this mythology of the Western and how we see the West is now trying to fight the very thing that I he created so. and and, yeah. and he rec- but he recognizes yeah. that in the end he he can't it, it's too late right it's already <clears throat> it's written in stone i mean the because yeah. you know as one of the originators of the western genre not i'm not saying he did this on pur- purpose but at least inadvertently he sold the idea of what it meant to be an american of what it, especially s- sort of during uh-huh. this time in history and now he's trying to do something different. And yet in the movie itself, it's sort of this recognition that it's too late. Like no matter what yeah. I do, we've already as a culture, as a people, as a country have decided mm-hmm. that this is how it is and it can't be broken. There's nothing I can do that can break that. Yeah. I love that scene when, um, just to like uh, go on a tangent, I love the scene when he burns down his own house, when John Wayne burned down his own house. That is one of the, great that whole sequence where he like freaks out is one of the greatest sequences ever john wayne is so good and he's so good in this movie and when he has like like that breakdown it's just so uh, there's something so like uh, heartbreaking about it yeah john wayne very famously doesn't sort of evoke a lot of emotions he's pretty serious he's got kind of that stone face the kind of buster keaton type yeah. of thing and Towards so character when you have a moment like that when he's just broken and he burns his own house down and it's not even he he doesn't he give kills himself. This, he, he, tries kills himself. Kills himself. he tries to kill himself right he doesn't give this big you know crying yelling screaming yeah it's this very just subtle little movements in, in his face and his eyes right. and strong. and that defeat where he just mm-hmm. you know he, he starts the fire and he just sits there because it's over it's it doesn't matter right it's it's over or, or like i love the Oh man, I forgot about the detail at the beginning when they uh look into the casket and they're like, Where are his boots? You know, put his boots mm-hmm. back on, give him back his gun and his, his gun. holster. And then his marshal it says, like, oh, he stopped carrying a gun. It's like, oh my God. Cause it doesn't matter anymore whether he carries a gun or not. It doesn't like like things have changed, you know? Like I don't even care if somebody like pulls out a gun and tries to shoot me. Like I have no use for it anymore. Like it's over. Yeah, he's a man out of time at this moment. I mean, oh. the moment right he creates the end of his own sort of world i mean he was this john wayne character was built for this world he was built to do this thing and he's great at it he's the best at it right he's a sharpshooter he he does all the things you're supposed to do but that moment he kills larry valance i mean it is a sort of suicide so you know him yeah. committing not completing but com- attempting suicide in that moment is like yeah there's nothing left like he's the fact that he doesn't carry a gun after that shows that he is no longer part of this world like he can no longer exist the world sort of moved on and, and he's just not part of it anymore he can't exist in that right. world yeah and he can and it also it's really that's really of course tied to kind of the Vera drew character right like he can't have her and if he can't have her then like what's the point of all this like like i built up like i built like this room for her and all this on my house like and all this like you know i have this like great property you know i'm 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 doing really well and but again like you said it uh it no longer matters anymore you know and if that doesn't matter anymore then like what's the point you know it is just uh uh <laughs> you know suicide like you know he he doesn't um you know he he was you know it's finding a, he's finding a way out of just like of this world that he no longer recognizes anymore i'm trying to think of other moments that really i mean every moment just looks so goddamn everything good. like yeah i mean once again it's a john ford movie so i mean like you get amazing american west vistas that look beautiful and amazing i think his best looking movie is the searchers but this one's really good looking too yeah, I mean, I my my moves of, of that I've seen, of the ones I've seen, that yes, yeah. like he has like a hundred movies. He has so many movies. That that fraction. man just because he was the epitome of the yeah he he went the yeah. studio system. That guy just he made all the movies. It's right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean this, but this one is particularly again 
I just love kind of like the configuration. I just love like the 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 this one. This movie is just so good because it's just like well, now that I think about it, I was I was gonna I was just I forgot about my darling Clementine. That is probably yeah, his best my favorite movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like maybe like I'm talking about like yeah, like the look of his movies. I don't know. Searchers is pretty good. Searchers is pretty good. You know, Searchers like the end of Searchers also kind of reminds me of the end of this movie a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like he saves her at the end and he walks away. Mm-hmm. that's also and he like he just like walks away into like the desert yeah you know that's just like another <laughs> movie where it's just kind of like wow you know like that's the end of that guy you know that type of guy it's over you know like if it ever existed you know it was like it existed for a second and it disappeared um liberty valance though i think is interesting because it's the rot it's the fall of guys like john wayne and the rise of guys like jimmy stewart of the Jimmy Stewart character, right? The lip again, the liberal educated lawyer, politician, teacher guys, um, who have their own playbook of how to uh, control people and to take property and to inflict violence. Mm -hmm. Um, it's so good. Like, it's just so perfectly like executed, even though it's really quite complicated. Yeah. Wow. Well, should we, wrap this conversation up i mean that felt like a really good sure (laughs) yeah why not (laughs) all right well you kind of gave a bit so i'll I'll give a bit and i will say there there's a very good reason that this is the sec third third john ford movie we've we've done on the show i believe it's just he just kills it he just every time i mean there's at least the second but maybe the third i don't remember i know we did darling clementine didn't we do searchers on here too wasn't searchers no we didn't do searchers no, i've seen didn't. searchers but i've seen i've also seen it, searchers. I didn't, we didn't maybe see we it. just talked about it a lot yeah. we, we've done john ford multiple times i feel like we've done another john ford i maybe not i don't know but the point is the reason we keep doing john ford is because he really is one of the greatest filmmakers of all time and you just can't help just being amazed by his abilities and his craft and you can tell especially when you watch his like career stuff that here's a man who's made 50 plus films i mean he's just he knows exactly what he wants and he gets it in this way that no one else really can and it's interesting to compare him to someone you know like like one of my other favorite directors jacques tati who only made seven films in his entire career and how both of these people even though they're sort of on opposite ends of the spectrum in some sense you know, in the way that they, they make movies. And so John Ford was just always producing movie after movie and Jack to T it, it take him years and years and years to make a movie. And yet they sort of get to the same place in the, in the end. And this movie is just so beautiful and moving. And there's really nothing to not like about this film. I mean, you got John Ford, you got John Wayne, you got Jimmy Stewart, some of two of my favorite actors of all time. One of my favorite directors of all time all in a piece together i mean it's how do you not like this how do you not love this movie i mean the the cinematography is beautiful the music just works perfectly incredible performances all around even by some of our smaller characters and a story that really hits home of what it means especially as an american you know what it means to be an american in this world uh in this day and age quote unquote and sort of this just constant forward movement that we are obsessed with and without asking what what is the cost of this you know this constant need for the new technology the new thing the new this that the yeah, other for progress yeah merely for the sake of progress quote unquote but not asking ourselves well what does that progress actually mean how does that actually look like in the world are we any happier than we were before that so gosh just an incredible film all around and definitely a nine out of ten for me yeah, I would agree with you. I'm going out at a 10 as well. It's, uh, it's you know, it is one of the, capital T, American <laughs> movies. You know, it's about America. It's about, it's a Western, so which is a very American genre. It has some of the greatest American actors of all time. It's made by one of the greatest American directors of all time. And again, it just sort of like, I don't know, I'm just so like enamored with how like the movie sort of uses a western story to tell kind of like the history of like liberal democracy in the united states like it's so like that's so astute and so smart and it's so like far beyond like anything else anyone has made like in the past 
five, you know, just however many years, you know, just it, it's so it's so masterful. And so, yeah, it, it's one of the greatest movies ever. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening. You can find everything I do at Austin Lugo. I'm on a letterbox at Retro Andrew, R E T R Zero Andrew. And you can find this podcast wherever you hear podcasts. You also find us Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at With Nothing to Say. And thank you all for listening. Thank you again.